welcome to the next episode of the Explain series with your host, Dr. Brett Palmer. And this week is the turn of progressive multifocal Lukang's encephalopathy, which is a bit of a mouthful, hence why we're just going to call it PML. And I'm going to explain to this series what this disease is. So um, we're going to start off with a little bit of a joke, probably not that funny. Um, so a doctor says, do you want to hear the good news or the bad news? And the patient says, uh, the good news, please. And the doctor replies, we're naming a disease after you. And that's really what en uh, encompasses PML. And I'll explain why uh, in a moment. So what is progressive multifocal leucan encephalopathy or PML? Well, it's a disease that is uh, very progressive. Uh, there's no... Uh, if, if, if you're HIV positive and immunosuppressed, um, the only treatment is effectively a highly active antiretroviral therapy, in other words, triple therapy. Uh, sometimes it can slow the progression and actually halt the progression of the disease. But uh, once it's established, it's not reversible. At the very early stages, it may be um, recoverable, uh, but it is uh, not a good news. So um, it's basically a demyelating condition. What that means is around the nerve cells, um, you have a, um, a protective layer, and much like uh, the electric covering you have on your copper wires. Um, and uh, with uh, PML, what happens is the protective layer um, of your copper wires effectively gets uh, taken away. Um, so the copper, uh, the copper wires being your nerves and the protective um, entity over those copper wires is called myelin, which is a sort of um, a protein and fat layer. It was first identified as um, a disease in 1958, but they didn't know what the cause was. And in 1971, uh, they discovered PML in a patient, and this patient was called John Cunningham. And they realized that what caused PML was actually a virus, and it's called the John Cunningham virus, or JC virus, and hence the joke at the beginning. Um, so it's a uh, very bad news for John Cunningham. Uh, from what I understand, he uh, most likely died from this disease. Um, and if you're wondering, well, that's a horrible virus, I don't get that. Well, chances are you've probably already got it. 70% of the population um, have uh, the JC virus um, by the time they exit uh, childhood. Um, so it is a, uh, a virus, uh, the JC virus. It's a non-enveloped, uh, double-stranded DNA um, uh, pol uh, polyomomara virus, which affects uh, the two types of brain cells, the astrocytes and the oligodendrocytes in particular, and it usually affects the deep uh, white matter of the brain. It occasionally can go into the cortical grey matter, but usually it stays around uh, the white matter of the brain. It rarely uh, involves the spinal cord and it doesn't uh, affect uh, the optic nerve. Uh, the eyes are effectively part of your brain. They're just outposts or protrusion of your brain uh, going forward. Um, uh, uh, and uh, PML doesn't usually affect the, uh, the optic nerves. And the nerves are uh, what takes the information from uh, your eyes to the brain. So um, where, was, where does this virus uh, live? It lives all around the body in the, the lymphoid uh, tissues, the kidneys, the bone marrow. And it's excreted in the urine of healthy individuals and as well as uh, those individuals with, uh, uh, with PML. Um, and a PML, we don't actually know whether it is a reactivation of an old dormant, dormant virus or whether it is actually the start uh, because of a new in infection. What we do know though, that if you have uh, the JC virus, it's not protective um, if you're immunosuppressed. And uh, if you have any form of immunosuppression, you're at risk of PML. So when I'm talking about your immunosuppression, I mean something serious. I don't mean using your steroid cream every now and then. You've got to be on uh, regular steroids for a, a debilitating condition, which is, is severely suppressing your immune system. Uh, transplant patients uh, are another group of individuals, and obviously uh, people who have HIV and not on treatment. Um, PML is, is rare, um, um, but uh, one thing that can happen is if you're immune, uh, highly immunosuppressed, uh, PML may present after you've started antiretroviral therapy. It doesn't mean antiretroviral therapy is causing PML, it 
it isn't. What causes it is the JC virus, uh, but um, as the immune system reconstitutes itself, uh, it can cause um, other problems uh, and diseases can then uh, come to the fore. Um, uh, and it's a question of how uh, quickly you, um, your immune system reconstitutes and from what level uh, or what base uh, it's reconstituting uh, from. And IRIS uh, in itself, uh, so it's uh, IRIS stands for Immune Reconstitution Inflammatory Syndrome. And uh, any uh, uh, infection, if you like, uh, uh, can become much, much worse before it gets better. And that's why if your CD4 uh, four count is very low, um, the doctor and usually treating um, a HIV um, a patient uh, will usually test that individual for uh, a wide range of different diseases. Either way, as your immune system builds up because you're uh, suppressing the virus on highly active antiretroviral therapy, the, uh, uh, as the uh, CD4 count uh, raises and goes uh, higher, uh, those CD4 counts are immediately called out to fight uh, an, an infection that's um, kicking around the body and uh, that can help precipitate uh, damage. It could be any infection, it could be uh, TB for example, it could be glandular fever, it could be shingles, it could be um, uh, herpes, whatever the infection is. Anyway. Well, so what are the PML symptoms? They can be a little bit like uh, multiple sclerosis. So you can get a general uh, weakness uh, that gets worse, clumsiness. Uh, you get a loss of sensation uh, or sensory loss. Uh, you can sometimes have difficulty or uh, in your arms and legs, which is like a generalized weakness effectively. Uh, vision changes, uh, your language skills, and sometimes your ability to actually speak uh, 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 starts to go, you have facial drooping, personality changes, and as well as a general mental and memory uh, slowness and uh, problems. Um, these can progress rapidly uh, to include complications such as dementia, seizures, uh, coma, and unfortunately uh, death if not treated uh, quickly. In fact, PML should be treated uh, or considered uh, a life-threatening medical emergency. Um, so how do you diagnose uh, PML? Well, uh, obviously someone comes in, they're going to look uh, not well uh, at all. Uh, they're going to uh, look like multiple sclerosis. And so what you need is uh, an MRI uh, scan. The CT is not going to show anything at all, but an MRI scan will show um, sort of like a cotton uh, wool fluffiness in certain areas, um, and I'll show you what that looks like uh, later. Um, and you also need a lumbar puncture, and in the lumbar puncture, you need to measure uh, or try to detect something called the JC virus. Now, if you've got JC virus, it's quite um, got quite a significant uh, level, and you've got the correct MRI appearances, um, then you don't need um, a brain biopsy unless there's another reason why a brain biopsy needs to be done, like you, you need to exclude um, another. Uh, um, uh, disease or you're querying uh, some kind of lymphoma. Um, uh, but the uh, MRI appearances and the fact that you have JC virus um, uh, uh, by itself uh, will be sufficient for a diagnosis of PML. Uh, and on the uh, MRI uh, appearances, you usually have lesions which are on both sides of the brain, uh, they, which, which we call bilateral. Um, they are not symmetrical, so you can have more on one side than you can on the other. And on uh, non-enhancing T2 images, they appear hyper-intense. In other words, they're brighter than surrounding tissue. And in uh, a T1 image, which is again is a different format of MRI, they are hyper-intense. Uh, admittedly, that particular sentence is a little bit uh, clinical. Anyway, the lesions are usually restricted to the white matter. There's usually no edema, which is swelling uh, with uh, normal um, uh, fluid. Um, and the, uh, if you have a, the asymmetric nature of the actual lesions and there's a sharp demarcation uh, that helps differentiate between PML and HIV uh, encephalopathy. Uh, and uh, HIV encephalopathy will be the subject of another series, so another um, uh, episode uh, later on. So what we have here is the brain of a patient. And if you just look at the top row, uh, and also, um, so on the top row on the 
uh, the left you have a T2 flare with contrast, which is an MRI image, and on the right it is T2 with contrast, and that's uh, non-flare. Uh, and so three years ago, this guy um, uh, uh, came uh, with all the symptoms which we uh, described previously, and you'll see uh, some uh, whiteness uh, in the, uh, which is now uh, circled with that um, uh, gillery green uh, circle, and this is there seems to be like a cotton ball um, uh, pattern type of um, uh, splodge uh, in, in the brain, and there's also one on the other side of the brain as well. Uh, well, that is a PML, so it's asymmetrical. It's not the same on both sides. And on the bottom image, you can see it uh, just as well. And if we take a um, uh, another slice of brain, uh, this is a, a little bit further up. Uh, again, you can see those. Um, uh, cotton ball type of images. And so the top row is three years ago, and the bottom row is what it looks like today. So in other words, it's got worse, it's got brighter, it's got more intense. And this is not a good uh, situation, and this guy unfortunately didn't fare very well. Um, so what is the management of PML? Um, there is, well, for HIV positive people, there's, there's, there's only one management, and that is highly active antiretroviral therapy, okay? And um, there's different types of regimes. Uh, uh, just take one tablet uh, once a day, and uh, this is a treatment for your HIV, and this is also a treatment for PML. You need to get, to stop the individual being suppressed. Um, and, uh, it does improve clinical outcomes. So, uh, normally, uh, with, without any kind of treatment, uh, survivability of PML it, it used to be about 10%. So if you were diagnosed with PML in the 1980s or 1990s, uh, that was that was it, you'd be sent to a hospice. Now the survivability has gone up to 50%. That's not great. This is not a good thing to have, unfortunately. Um, there are risk factors associated with a poor prognosis. Unfortunately, the older you are, but that goes with most um, uh, disease and infection, the older you are, uh, the worst uh, uh, the outcome, and, and, and how you are at presentation. Uh, and also, if, if the brain stem is involved, you're thinking, why the brain stem? Why, why is the brain stem more important than any other part of the brain? Sure, it's all important. It is, uh, but the brain stem is what they call the, the primal uh, brain or the first brain. Uh, that denotes all uh, the most basic functions. And so, for example, breathing. Um, and if the brain stem is involved, it's a very, very bad uh, prognosis. Uh, also as well, if you have a high uh, JC viral load, and if you're unable to clear it very well with highly active, highly active antiretroviral therapy is also a very bad um, prognosis factor. And the last prognosis factor is um, how low your immune system is. So if your CD4 count is below 100, and so, you know, uh, if, you're, if you don't have HIV, your CD4 count should be between 450 and 1,200 um, cells per milliliter. And if you have a CD4 count which is very, very low, below 100, uh, you're going to do badly. Um, all the PML patients I've seen have been under 50. Uh, at presentation. Um, but I'm sure there's others with higher CD4 counts, uh, but the lower CD4 count, uh, the worse uh, it can be, unfortunately. And so there are other factor, uh, factors that improve um, your chances of a, a PML prognosis and they're effectively opposite as above. Uh, a good immunological response and higher CD4 uh, count on presentation. And there have been individuals that have actually got through um, PML and actually recovered and recovered very well. Um, okay, so uh, these are some of the websites I've put together and uh, please visit them. Uh, they're very, very good guides. So if you are a medical student, a doctor, uh, or just someone who's uh, interested in wanting to learn more about PML, I would recommend the John Hopkins uh, guide. It's very, very good. Uh, there's also uh, some papers uh, in the NCBI um, uh, website as well. Uh, uh, I believe uh, AIDSMAP.com also do a very good uh, review of some of these uh, of PML as well, if I remember correctly. So uh, thank you very much. Um, have uh, Please like, subscribe and share. Uh, thank you very much for watching and have uh, good sexual health.